Welcome, my friends. This is Maniacal Incorporated, continuing on from where I left off in the last episode. Our armies are marching south to engage in a battle in Wessex. One of our allies is trying to uh, take control of some territory. I said I'd start the episode by showing you poor Owl Donal. He was the focus of so much attention... For so many episodes, HBO, like I said, were intending doing a spin-off series with himself and Kukurka Moore. But uh, he was demoted as a knight. He only has ten prowess. Uh, he was never great as a knight, but um, uh, he was. Uh, he did a great old job. That's I'm, I'm selling him short. He did a great old job for his skills. Sometimes he was a 13, sometimes he was a 10. But uh, he's no longer a knight, and he has gone wandering, so he's no longer in our court. Green Graffador had dreams of putting Donal on the Scottish throne. Um, Donal is the son of the last King of Scotland, Sir Vertuk, under whose rule the entire thing collapsed. And um, yeah, we had plans that Donal was going to was going to succeed in Scotland, but Green Graffador's early death and the the chaotic events surrounding it uh, because if Rukon had lived long enough maybe to see his son Koning installed I think Koning because they gained territory up there I think Koning would have pushed for the for the conquest of Scotland but it doesn't look like that's going to happen so um but there's there's Donal anyway I have him I have him uh pinned I have a couple of characters pinned not not too many uh but if if anything comes up uh we will we will hear about what he's doing I will keep you informed in the last episode, we saw an assassination attempt against Flan Sinna. Well, that's what Flan Sinna saw. It looks like uh, Flan Sinna's wife was murdered by her brother, so that he would inherit the Jarldom of Iceland, but uh, Flan Sinna possibly isn't seeing it that way. Flan Sinna is seeing daggers in the dark, and is beginning to grow suspicious of those around him, especially his half-brother Lachnon, who has twice started factions against him to install himself as the High King. And what Flancina is going to begin to do is to fabricate a hook, or to try to fabricate a hook against his brother. There's a, a little game of cat and mouse going on over here. The I'm not into, entirely too sure what armies these are. Dover and Reading are hunting down London. London is our ally. So what we're going to do, which of the two armies will I march over? Uh, Koning's army, absolutely. So we'll march Koning's army over in this direction to, uh, to give him some bit of aid. Now, where is he going to? Because we don't want to be caught out here. So this is this is rather interesting. Kukurka Moor is the current head of the dynasty, which means that he controls the dynasty legacies. And I was... Well, I won't say I was certain that he would have gone for anything. I thought he would have probably gone for um, down the warfare route. But uh, no, he's gone for long reach. So hostile scheme success chance has gone up by ten. That's fantastic. That's going to that's going to benefit um, intrigue minded Flanzina. So that's awesome. He's doing a he's doing a great job. Um, oh man, that would be fantastic if uh, if Kukarka would be so kind as to go for that next. I don't think so. I don't think so. I've changed. The direction of the second army as well because it's not a great chance if we do hit them um, they have gone into battle um, oh god if we get caught with that uh, <laughs> fighting two people nope we're actually going in against the main army itself and we enter maybe a bit late Let's see how it's going.
I don't think we're in a safe enough position that we can take this army and move it to uh, probably Oxfordshire. And of course, we're going to do we're going to do our our pesky little thing of checking. Oh yes, that's where we want to raid down. We're helping when it when it suits us. Um, and apparently, in the midst of all this, we have we have time to go to another book reading in Inverness. We have great books in Tralee. You really should come to Tralee and read some of our books. Um, she's intrigue minded. Maybe something else that's uh, attracted Flansina to her. Uh, informative, entertaining, or religion? We'll go with informative. Uh, well, hmm. if informative links to diplomacy, we're in a bit of trouble. Will we go with entertaining? Informative, entertaining. Let's go with informative. Let's let's see how that works. It was a good choice. Kukarka is making a bit of a name for himself. And let's quickly look at the details of that big battle. What I've learned is that, because there was a debate over it, did Koning kill 39 people? Or did a bodyguard around Koning kill 39 people? Apparently, it's the latter. Koning and his group, Koning and his... Uh, the, the section that Koning was leading killed a total of 39 people. And that uh, the prowess measure and all that kind of stuff, it represents kind of the the training and martial ability, not alone of the individual uh, ruler, but of all the, all the people around them uh, as well. So there's our... I think he's our preferred successor at the moment. I think we're, we're supporting Kukurka because Kukurka is actually our friend. Aww. So, um... We're supporting Kukarka, but I would like to see Koning succeed. But Koning's much older than, than Flansina. He got 39 kills. Uh, I don't think this guy is under us. He's not. Uh, he's the um, he's part of our allies' army. Uh, what, I think that's Ian Bacon's son. So there's Ian Bacon, and his son actually uh, out-murdered him. Kukarka, for all the promise that he was showing, well, again, that's a, that's a lot of kills, but he's not um, he's not as high up as we thought he would be. Uh, Orgist is another of Ian Bacon's sons, and uh, yeah, not too not too shabby a uh, not too shabby a battle. So, what can we actually do with our army? Where would be a good direction to send them? Again, we look for where has the most money. I don't think it has the most, but uh, it has a nice chunk. So we will send them down into... Oh wait, maybe that's not actually... We're not actually attacking that place. <laughs> we better send them someplace we're attacking. Um, yeah, looks like it's going to be there. We will get 100 casualties. And there was a second battle. Somebody wandered in late. And we didn't even get time to click on it and actually check. I can't imagine. Uh, I can't imagine that was too exciting. Koning got one kill, and that's it. One person died, and they ran. Now I forgot about this. We are sieging down pretty hefty buildings, and we're not doing great against them. So what I might do is I might divert that second army. Uh, I might divert that second army and get them to to deal with these guys down here. Because, uh, yeah, it's going to take us a long time to siege down that place. I do not know whether to tear the clothes from her body or punch the greedy smile of her face. She kisses me. A challenge! Yeah, Flansina, I think you've been I think you've been hitting the drink a bit too much. Um, What would Flansina do here? Is he going to take this woman as his lover? Do you know, I think he would. I think he would. She has. Uh, she's an elusive shadow, and um, he's still he's still broken up after Sif's death. So I think he would kiss me again, you abhorrent witch. So it looks like there's going to be a large battle here as a number of forces are moving in. One battle begins. Ooh, 
Dovdaleha has been maimed and maimed badly. So that's Ainbakon's son. That's our our chief knightly family. Oh good heavens. My lover has revealed that I am seeing them in secret. With the truth spreading like wildfire, our passion may not have been as hidden as we would like to believe. Well, if she's if she's uh, exposed it, exactly, who are they to judge us? You gain the trait adulterer. We've lost a level of devotion. Uh, 30 opinion. We've lost 30 opinion with the Countess. We've lost 60 opinion with our wife, with all three of our our wives oh no how how dare they judge me how dare they your sinful acts come at a cost flancina will tell you what you can do with your cost That didn't sound like much of a threat, but then again, he is heavily drunk, so that's... It's probably as good a threat as he can make in the condition that he's in at the moment. Um, ooh, lots of people don't like us now. Not nice. Oh, he just hates us because he's, uh, he's zealous. Uh, so nobody... Oh, we're getting minus five for being an adulterer. Um... Kukarka is the only one that actually still likes me. Oh, because he's also an adulterer. Hey, we're gonna we're gonna have chats about. I don't want to know what we have chats about. This actually puts us in a really interesting position that we can bring the army up south now, and we can have them take uh, Berkshire without losing what was it, a hundred troops? So all we had to do was have them lose about two hundred troops in battle. That's efficiency. Now, I, I did notice this a few minutes ago, but there's not a huge lot that I can do, but Freddie Mercury has declared a peasant revolt to, um... I don't know what he wants. He probably wants to break free. But he's already sieged down Alloc. And he's now going for Brefni. Um... We might be able to... We might be able to do some... rigmarole of a thing where we stand down the troops over here and then teleport them over here and, and have them attack but uh, we're not too pushed about that for the for the, the moment more indiscretions uh, this is chiefess Manfred her belly grows can there and there can be no doubt she is with child she has said nothing but could this be the result of our carnal relations surely not I must ask her about it myself surely not Surely he has something to do with it. Maybe, maybe we shouldn't have started with unmarried women. And so Manfred confirms to us that yes, indeed, she is pregnant with our child. The two of us, a child? Oh, Flansena, stop pretending. Look at, look at the two boys, happy out, baiting their shields in unison. They've been practicing that. You can just tell they've been practicing that. And they are so proud. So this army has just finished sieging Oxford, which has given 100% uh, war score. So hopefully the guys will bring this war to an end shortly. Um, it would make more sense. They're going to go out to sea. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring these guys. We could actually... Um, there you go. There's the end to that war. So be it. Um, we are now in a position to disband these two armies. For the first time in a very, very long time. And we will offer to join... Uh, Urgus' war. He's also been practicing. Offer to join war. Listen to him. Delighted with himself. He's been practicing as well. Uh, so we've joined that war. And it's under Briog. Um, 
Oh, Koning is, is commanding another army. Yeah, he's involved in a war. Do you know what? We'll put the man himself in charge. A man with absolutely no military experience whatsoever. And an alcoholic. And he's now in command of 2,900 troops. What could possibly go wrong? So a man's been up all night playing the drums. The neighbours have gotten pissed off and they're coming in with a big army. And there we go. That should be that taken care of. Uh, Koning couldn't command the army, but uh, but he was actually involved in the attack. And Freddie Mercury has been put in jail. And there's poor Owl Dovdaleha. His fertility has gone down 20%. Um, he's a giant and his wife is a giant. So I was hoping to get a, a child out of them. So there shouldn't be any penalties there. Or maybe a chance of a of a child at some stage, I don't know. I would like a I would like a guaranteed giant military child. But um So he's not Ian Bacon's son, he's Ian Bacon's stepson. So I should be saying that uh, Maura Nick Green Graffador, she's the one that has provided us with um, with quite a a number of well, okay, two. Um two knights. Telurg didn't get the the giant trait. He's he's almost on the list of knights though. And there is uh, another daughter. Dismiss. There he is. He's gone into jail. And the kingdom is some way at peace. So I haven't stood down the army. I'm marching them across into Wigtown, into Galloway. You know what's going to happen then. And while I think of it, because it's the first opportunity we've had, um, yeah, minus 49, minus 48, yeah, they're not, why aren't, why aren't they happy with me? Adulterer, minus 5, uh, unfaithful, minus 58. Ugh. What must it have been like for poor Enid to hear that I had been sleeping with her stepsister, uh, whose area has just been sieged down. I'm not entirely too sure who it's sieged down by. Oh, uh, Vepsia, is it Raithers from there? So they're the guys that have pushed the Gardariki out of of Gardariki. And uh, what must it have been like for my, uh, for my wife's other stepsister? Look at her and her big mad cosplay. She's going way out into the Crusades. They're still not doing great. They were minus eight, and now they're down to uh, to minus nine. Um, yeah, there has Piscal fallen. Somebody was trying to take that while ago. It has indeed. There it's gone. Uh, so Novgorod is just down to those two counties, and uh, yeah, it's um, falling apart down here as well. Oh, there they've actually they've actually put a they've actually got a foothold there in. Um, in England itself. I don't think they're going to become great enemies to us. No, they're not. And the Swedes, of course, are still up around their ridiculous numbers. I've just gotten this pop-up. A rough start. I wish I could celebrate the birth of our daughter, but Countess Astrid has made it clear that the babe will not be considered a true member of her house. I didn't even know there was another baby on the way, but, uh, but there you go. Asta Acra, the third child that Flansina has had with uh, Countess Astrid, his stepsister-in-law, his sister in step -law. Not entirely too sure. You're being very quiet. Huh? You're not saying nothing. No, you're being very quiet. I wish things were otherwise, little Asta. So it looks like she recognised the other two, but I presume, or maybe not, I'm not entirely too sure. Maybe none of them, maybe this is just the first time that I've gotten that specific pop-up. I cannot tell you 
how much of a kick in the teeth this is. I am no longer able to count how many children Flancina has had, and not a single one of them has inherited his quick trait until now. A child, a daughter that has been passed off as um, being a legitimate child of Countess Malmfred and her husband. That is the first child that has picked up that quick trait. That's a kick in the teeth. Um, if they only knew. Uh, if they only knew. I might have mentioned earlier that Kukarka Moor and Flancina are friends. I think Flancina is the type of person that takes more from a friendship, or from this friendship in particular, than he, than he gives. He most certainly took part in the Battle of Armagh. Uh, that's where Flancina got that gnarly scar that I mentioned. Um, when, I, when I took over playing as him, I said he was wounded. I'm not too sure how he got wounded. Well, of course, that was in the Battle of Armagh that he was wounded. Uh, if he'd been killed in that battle, my god, imagine the, the, the consequences. But, um, so while his friend... Kukarka Moor was fighting to install his sister as the High Queen of Ireland. Flanson saw an opportunity and struck and took the High Kingship for himself. Well, I think Flanson has also turned his gaze towards uh, Kukarka's adulterous wife. And of course the two of them, Kukarka Moor and Flanson, they have great old chats about adultery. Apparently they both like each other. I think it's a plus 10 because they're both adulterous, is it? Uh, yeah, plus 10 also adulterer. So, um, so presumably Flansina, drunk and talking to Kukarka Moor about adultery. Maybe he's even heard the rumors about Kukarka Moor's wife. Uh, this is, she's a member, as you can see, of the, of Brittany. Um, her grandfather didn't directly kill Kukarka, who Kukarka Moor is, is named after, but it was in the wars against Brittany that uh, that Kukarka died and we married into this family because we were desperate for alliances and now we're going to start a scheme to seduce her. Our forces have landed in Galloway. We're going to put them on... Uh, I think it's changed now, hasn't it? Oh no, it hasn't. Start raiding and across into the Isle of Man. It's a well-known fact, a statement of fact, that the crack was 90 in the Isle of Man. They've uh, they've managed to get back 24 quid since we were talking to them last. So let's go have some crack on the Isle of Man. Someone, I'm not entirely too sure who, but someone has started a series of vicious rumours against High Chieftain Loch Nawn. None of them are true, and someone should decry them, as the obvious lies that they are. Uh, I must stand up to this injustice. I could spend a hundred piety and gain a weak hook. I think I'm going to uh, to think about this a bit more carefully. So the scheme will restart at zero progress. And we've almost completed, and we have completed, our uh, Siege of the Isle of Man. We've been raising her for a good while, our half-sister, Dove Dill, or Dove Deal. And she's come of age. She is... So this would have been organised by her liege, which is my half-brother, but she's being married off to uh, into one of the Welsh families. Uh, so until we meet again, is he the heir to anything? Um, he might actually be the... He is a foreign ruler, so he is actually... Uh, the controller of Gwynedd. So, good luck. Talk to you later. Have a good one. So it's just been one depressing blow after another. How could Flansina possibly recover from this? Cousin Lionello has been slain in the Battle of Hebron. I have no idea who this man is. Uh, so there's a crusade on at the moment, as we've as we've seen. It's not going well, and it's gotten worse. Um... I'm not entirely too sure what branch of the family he is. So here's his mother, uh, who is my aunt. And there is my grandmother, Judith. Do I recognize anybody from this list? Um, 
anybody here that we... Ah, there's our mother. Okay, so... Um... Yeah, I'm not entirely too sure <laughs> what the family relationship here is, but Lionello, what an awesome name. But there you go, he's dead. 32 years of age. Did he have any children? Uh, he had a couple of children, including the new Count of Spoleto. Poor old cousin Lionello. Christmas parties won't be the same again without him. Our army has reached Annadale. We split it in half. We will take the army that is commanded by Flancina and send it in here to uh, Cumberland, where we've had good old fun before. And we'll take the one that's commanded by Briog. And we will change... Um, to Embacon, because Embacon is a reaver, so the raid speed is higher. And we will send him into Durham, I believe. Yes. And so we're going to begin pushing south towards... Oh, well, look at this. East and West Riding. How very interesting. Uh, none of them have any money. We're going to push down in that direction anyway. But uh, I had been... I had been looking through here before. There are some big moneyed areas down here, and um, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna take a wander down and see our wife Enid's. Oh my God! Step uncle in law's wife. I have no idea what the relationship is there. Her stepsister's uncle's wife. So they're they're stepsister's aunt. Basically, I'm just looking for the places that have the most money. And that place has no money, so that's not a great place to be. And we are overwhelmed by stress. Quite a lot of things have just happened all in one go. So I'm going to uh, find some place better to send him. Uh, just, um, Flansina, just raid it off. Just raid it off. Just go, just find some places to raid. We've gained a lot of stress because our lover, Muriel, has died. And she has died from... Cancer at 22 years of age. She did give uh, Chieftain Kukarka Moore a child, a daughter, a giant of a daughter. So this is the the first lover that we took. Uh, the daughter of Briog, our marshal. We became a bit fascinated with him after uh, a number of early victories, and she has died. And we've gained a lot of stress, and we are now overwhelmed with stress. Like I said. Flansina, drink it off, raid it off, it'll be fine. Curses! Someone has discovered that I am attempting to fabricate a hook on High Chieftain Lyaknon. This cannot be good for Flansina's paranoia. So Flansina has led the armies in Westmoreland. He has sieged down the area, taken a chunk of, of gold. And in a drunken stupper... Flansinna has decided that he wants to see his children. I would like to see the baby. And Flansinna is going to march his army, and he will lead his army, and strike at the capital of his lover, and see if he can get 17 quid off of her. But first of all, he will fight two men, and he continues on. So Flan Sinna is approaching West Riding, he's drunk, he's carrying a stereo over his head that's playing loud music. What must Astrid be thinking of all this? The other army is marching down into Lincolnshire and we're going to bring them across into Nottinghamshire because if we bring them straight down I think we lose like 300 soldiers or something. And uh, they are actually going to start the, uh, the big raiding. And there he goes, the poor man, Briog, our marshal has died uh, shortly after his his daughter passed away from cancer so we have a, a vacant position on the uh, the council now but Briog surely one of our greatest generals I think it's three kings he served under led numerous armies served as marshal numerous times he was replaced by numerous people and kept being uh, renominated but um, there he goes and the poor man what did he die from it looks like old age um Old age at 62. In his honour, we will march these guys into Nottinghamshire. 
So they just lose 100 casualties. They're striking at a big pot of loot. Uh, would it be possible or wise to maybe split this army further? It would, but it can't be done because we're we're in the, uh, the wrong area. So let's see if we can appoint a successor to poor Owl um, Briog. And it looks like it's going to be our bestest best friend in the whole world, does it? It doesn't. Um, I thought it was going to be Kukurka. He doesn't really mind too much that he doesn't have a, a position on the council. Kukurka doesn't mind. Well, he, he's... He's already... Um, he wants a position on the council, which gives him minus 40. And... Um, do you know what? I think, yeah. Flansena would probably... Especially as Flansena is trying to schmooze his wife. He's probably going to try and distract Kukarkamur by making him his marshal. And I believe Kukarkamur has been put on to... Uh, he should be put controlling or increasing control because it's bad. Oh, it's bad. We'll put him in Alach because it suffered heavily there from uh, from when it was taken over by that uh, peasant peasant rebellion. And I think Flan Sinna has sieged down. He has indeed. He's taken all of his... Uh, oh, he hasn't. Is the siege still going on? Well, this is an interesting one. The siege, there's nothing happening here. Uh, I'm not entirely too sure why. She does have money. She's not letting us see the baby. Uh, she's, she's turned the wains against us. She's turned the wains against us. We'll march out. Does Derby have money before we... Right, we'll go for Derby first of all. We're going to lose some uh, some troops. We'll go for Derby first of all. And we'll see if we can if we can turn back and, and raid it in a second. Um, I'm not too sure what's going on there. With every step we take, we're losing more and more men. But we're going to keep pushing down. These areas are involved in the Crusades. They're um, heavily rife with wars in the last period in time. West Riding has just lit up, lit up blue. It's possible that they've been dragged into a war on somebody's side. And that we can't siege the place down anymore. Because they're now allies of... We can also see Ulsters lit up. Oh. Flansina is both enraged and intrigued by the, the wrangling that went on to, um, to prevent him from uh, sieging down that place. Well, Kukurka's wife isn't one for reading books anyway. Uh, this is the first pop-up we've gotten. You came all this way for me, my sunshine. So apparently we've been creeping around Kukurka Moore's castle dressed as a servant and we have um we have met her for a sojourn in the in the garden um for you i would do this journey a hundred times over truly to dublin that's not it's not too bad it's a little yeah no it's a lengthy enough i'll drive it depends it depends what way you get the um, the traffic once you get to limerick you're fine really the limerick to dublin is fine but uh yeah once you get out of Kerry, it's grand so it's, it's not the worst of journeys um gains 20 opinion and becomes our lover. Well, I think he's gonna. She does look a lot like Muriel. She does look a lot like Muriel with the weird, the weird head bandage to keep her jaw on. I presume that's what it's for. I don't know. So uh, yeah, we'll we'll take her as a lover. That'll be another another person that could possibly die and drive us insane. So we've just struck Leicestershire. We could come for Huntingdonshire. These names must be made up. And uh, there's a good chunk of money. Oh, there's a good chunk of dead bodies there as well. Um, ooh, what's that gonna What's that gonna take off of us? Three hundred. On the one hand, that's a lot of people to lose. On the lot, of, on the other hand, that's a lot of gold. I think we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it, and we're gonna we're gonna be looking at turning the army around shortly. So there we're down to twelve sixty nine. And we have a new intrigue perk. 
1169. Oh my god, no, 1169, the Norman invasions. And Chiefess Malmfred is, um, is with child again. Surely not. Flanson has been drunk and leading an army around England. Surely this can't be... Surely this can't be ours. Oh, well, now here's something interesting. Uh, here is something interesting. What do we want to do here? For now, we'll see if we can turn that army around. Oh, how many times are we going to get hit? Oh, we're going to get hit so many times. Oh, it hurts. Yeah, I think to be on the safe side, we'll, we'll turn them around. We're going to lose another 200 troops. But, um... The, the worst thing would be to lose that 53 gold. Let's let's see all of the various things that have just jumped up for us. I'm between two minds what to do here. We could start trying to, um, to, to push down here to aid us with fabricating some hooks. Uh, especially the hostile scheme. Murder scheme power plus thirty percent. Why? Why would I? Why would I do? Why would I do that? Whoops! My finger slipped. I'm not planning anything. <clears throat> I'd totally forgotten about this guy. But um, so there's a, a ten year old who's prepared to give us all his pocket money to uh, get this guy out of prison. So yeah, sure. Ransom, ransom him. And Flanson now finds himself in a um, a rather precarious position. There's two very large armies. 1,000, oh, it's 2,600 now. And there on the left is 2,900. So there's a lot of troops which are very hostile to him. I think Flanson has decided it's probably about time that he maybe turns around and runs away. And keeps himself alive and keeps what money he has earned. Then again, he is hammer drunk. He is hammer drunk. Yeah, so Flansina has made the absolutely brilliant decision to march the army down into uh, Warwickshire. Another army has headed for... What the hell is this? Northampton? Northamptonshire? These names are just made up. Another cousin of ours has been slain in battle. It was actually slain in this battle over here. So, uh, a cousin of ours. Also, there's um, Mael Mead or Mol Mead, so Arcade's sister from the same from the same mother, and uh, so Flansina's daughter. We were I I didn't totally understand whether she was Flansina's actual daughter because it was kind of was kind of weirdly named. Um, but yeah, so her son. Well, both of our children are now are now dead. So one of them died from internal in injuries, um, I presume following a battle, and this guy has just been slain by a member of the House of Ar Acre, which is of course the house of our wife's stepsisters, one of whom we have had three children with. It's a small world. There's a lot of hostile forces. Uh, there's a lot of hostile forces around here. This isn't the first time that we've gotten a pop-up like this, but it's the first time that somebody who is paranoid out of his mind has gotten it. We've just been told that Carl has been caught bragging loudly about the great deal he struck with a fancy lord in pearls and silk. And we have two options. Uh, thanks for bringing this to my attention, which gives me a bit of stress. So we don't want to do that. Um, but that idiot belongs in my dungeon. That won't give me any stress. Dear God, I'm going to get 79 stress because I'm paranoid. Uh, if we were to take this option, we would get a total of uh, 102 stress. <laughs> So we're not going to take that option. We're going to take the uh, the less stressful option. Uh, Carl goes to our dungeon. And he doesn't like us for a while. So I think we've just had a mental break. We're now up to uh, stress level 2. So we have a severe health penalty. 
and it looks like Flan Sinna has been going around making improprietous remarks to people. I sit paying only a little attention as the peasant finishes their tale of woe. The tale of woe is probably like the fact that we just burnt down their house. It's probably an English uh, peasant. Frankly, I barely even registered what they were talking about. My mind is full to bursting with my own problems. A likely story. You're probably some foreign spy, I reply without thinking. The court around us goes utterly quiet, all eyes on the bewildered commoner and me. Evidently, that wasn't the response they expected. Well, if we are holding court in the middle of England, then... Well, yeah, he's foreign. He's, he's Anglo-Saxon. Um, I can scream, leave, all of you, and become secluded, like my grandfather. We gain a strange recluse. Is that is that a new one? Direct vassal opinion is minus five. Courtier opinion is minus five. Uh, a stiff drink solves most problems. Indeed, it does. Oh, you gain drinking binge for three years. Dear God, that's one hell of a binge. So moderate health penalty, minus one to stewardship, minus one to learning. Um, and we lose 46 stress. Our apologies. Now, uh, repeat your story. A stiff drink solves most problems. A pint of plain is your only man. So we're no longer overwhelmed by stress. And that happens just as we hit Warwickshire, or Warwickshire. Oh god, no! They're sending in an army against us! They actually are sending in armies against us. Um, they actually are. <laughs> they actually are sending in armies against us. There's another a thousand following. <laughs> well... I'm almost certain that that other a thousand is going to follow as well. Or will it? Let's let's see. Let's see if they follow. That is a sizable. Well, I won't say it's a sizable army, but. Uh, as Flan's in a commanding, he's not exactly the best. So here's that other a thousand. I don't think they're going to follow. I'm not too sure what they're doing. And just as that battle is coming to an end, we'll take this other army and we will bring it in here. So they have just finished raiding. So we had two battles, one after the other. Uh, there was I don't think there was any even enough people there in the first one to uh, to fight. And here's a member of the Onuk Rahland, a chancellor to an earl in Gloucestershire. So yeah, everyone's everyone's in their in their uh, Templar Knights cosplay because they're all taking part in the crusade and I'm just wandering around here. Ooh, boys, you're not doing a great job. I'm just wandering around here taking all their gold. So we'll dismiss that one and we'll see as uh, so in Koning, uh Kukarka, Dovdaleha didn't do too shabby with his big fancy mask on him. Uh, there's his stepfather, Enbacon, and there's his stepbrother, Enbacon's son. Not too sure who that dude is. Uh, he does have a child, though. So uh, some of these, some of these characters, I would have been um, trying to marry them off to uh, to see if we could continue having some uh, some important um, families, some important knightly families. So we'll finish this siege rapidly, and I'd say somebody is going to pick Flansina off the ground and throw him over their shoulder and run. I hope it's Kukarka. 
and we're going to run, and you know what? We're probably going to end up running past West Riding, which we can't siege anymore, and we're going to make it for Anadale with as much money as we have. We're going to lose another uh, 100 troops as we pass through. And here's an interesting one. A, a notable guest has arrived. That's uh, that's our lover slash Kukurka's wife, who just vanished. And she's in our court now for some strange reason. I won't say so, some strange reason, but um, she's a bold gentlewoman. But uh, she has she has left her husband's court to come to ours. Kukurka is now up to plus ninety three percent. Um, favor because we gave him a seat on the council also an adulterer do you think it's like the room where Flancina is Mark and Kukurka is is Tommy Wiseau and um, okay then uh, Flancina is, is Greg Sestro and and Greg is is telling Tommy of like oh I met this girl and she's great and and Tommy is like, yeah, I feel happy for you, but doesn't realize that that Flanson is talking about his wife. Do you think? Th I think that's what it's after turning into. I think that's what it's turning into. That's what happens. All great mythology is just repeated over and over again. And the room is great mythology. Oh, Carl died in my dungeons. Ah, Carl. I'm not going to lie, I forgot Carl was there. Our spymaster has come to us to tell us that somebody is trying to kill the knight that we were recently looking at. He's a, a member of House Coleman. So, I wonder if this is actually Clan Coleman, which is the dynasty that uh, that Flan Sinner the First should be a part of. The, uh, the, the dominant power in the southern Inale lands. But, uh, so somebody's trying to stop him, or to kill him. We must stop it. Let's pause very quickly and go to Intrigue and look at Schemes. A 5% chance to kill him. We won't worry too much about it for now, but who knows what's going to what's going to happen. Uh, somebody's probably plying Flan Sinna with drink as they move up past West Riding. And head back towards Annadale. We've been told that we can assign somebody to our son, Kian. I think I'm going to send him to Enbukon. Enbukon doesn't have any great traits that we want for him. I, I, I don't think, I don't think any of Flansina's children. I think Flansina has utterly annihilated any chance of anyone in his family ever succeeding him. I don't think even Loch Noan. I think Garrel's entire line is going to be forgotten about in the annals. So I'm not too worried here about, about producing a, a future um, a future ruler. I think we'll send him. We'll try to, but we're actually being told that we can't. Um, I don't think he'll accept. Am I, am I right? No target selected. Oh, there is a target selected. Okay. Um... Yeah, so we'll send him. We'll send him there, and we won't have him try to to adopt anything because he's he's still Catholic. I how many episodes? About five or six mo episodes ago, or maybe even more. I said, Embakon, don't you worry. We'll convert you. I don't think we will. I don't think we will. I still have that too few spouses. Well, that's the other thing that's happened. The that limit is now determined by your rank. So a count, I think. Um, if they have one wife, then that then that penalty goes away. But a a king such as myself uh, must have four wives. We will we will go and look once once he sobers up in a minute or two. Once we get back onto Irish soil and he sobers up, we'll go and look at maybe um, trying to find uh, another wife. Look at the big, smug, happy face on him. In his, in his, what's, what's he even wearing? Is it a fencing outfit or something? Look at the big smug face on him. Bring it up. My three children. You're gonna convert them to Welsh Cathar. Flanson is not gonna have that. 
Flanson is not going to have that. Our Raiders have bought back a good chunk of money and prestige to us. 80 gold from one group and 67 gold from another. We can't complain too much about that. Here's Christina, Spymaster for Countess Astrid, and she has joined our scheme. She has joined our scheme, which is pretty much going to guarantee that, um, that it's going to be a success. And I think again, in his drunkenness, in his madness... I think Flancina is going to see if he can seduce the spymaster of his lover, Countess Astrid. Countess Astrid, I think, is is driving um, is driving Flancina mad. We will disband the armies. I'm going to see what that does for our prestige level in a second. Well, there you go. Isn't that isn't that uh, isn't that interesting? As I make all the preparations necessary for Earl Tudwall's departure from the world, I am interrupted by a page. The boar went and died without any help from me. He had his head ripped off. Um. Well, there you go. That that bit of a neck guard that he had on him didn't do didn't do no good for him. You might think Flancina must be delighted. This is the second time that Flancina has been informed, interrupted by a page, that somebody he has been trying to kill went and died without him. I imagine this is just causing Flancina even even more stress uh, and, and anxiety. Uh, Satan must have been eager for his company. We were trying to fabricate a hook on our brother, High Chieftain Lachnon, and when we switched to the murder... Um, attempt against our lover's husband that uh, that was turned off. So now we're going to try and fabricate a hook on High Chieftain Scanlon instead. I think he's still leading a... Uh, is he leading... I'd be down into factions. Um, and he's still leading a faction to try to install... I think it's his sister Aileen on the Irish throne. It is indeed his sister. Uh, with a big gash across her face. She's not getting wounded. So, again, the paranoia is kicking in, and Flansina is going to try to. Um, he's going to try and secure a strong hook on his disciple. Man, he trained. And it's gone long. The first thing he does is turns around and attempts to organize a faction to overthrow Flansina. I'm sure that has not sat well with Flansina. The other thing is that we can see that uh, Sweden has taken... I'm not too sure actually who had who had Carrick before them. Uh, the Earldom of Carrick. Um, I don't know who they were actually part of. I I know it was part of Jorvik for one for uh, at one stage. So maybe maybe Sweden went to war with Jorvik, and I think that's the big war. That uh, no, there was a different war, but um, there's still something going on over Carrick at the moment. But um, that's a bit alarming for us because again, they've taken a, a chunk of. Losses, and they're still down to 6,000. They can put together 6,000 max, 6,700 at the moment. So that's a hefty alliance that we're going to have to look at doing something about. And possibly Flansina, in his drunken stopper, is going to order an attack um, against... There's a, there's a saying that you should never kick a man while he's down. Well, that's exactly what Flansina is going to do. He's going to kick an entire man while he's down the Welshman, who controls Frenchman, he is fighting in th uh, two wars at the moment. So it's entirely possible that uh, that Flansina will contribute to a third war on the next episode. I'm going to leave it there for today. Flansina descends into a level of madness and paranoia and alcoholism that previous members of his family... I won't say could have only dreamt of. I, I I suppose they could have only dreamt of it as nightmares, but um, it's been a it's been an interesting one to say the the very least. Pretty much, all we achieved in this episode was our big raid into England, 
And in fairness, we did bring back a lot of money. Now, part of that money, we could start using it to invest and to uh, to build up Ireland. But I think Flansina is also aware of the fact that he is losing alliances. He is losing um, troop numbers. He is unsure as to the loyalty of the people around him. He's seeing, or at least this is how I'm going to pass it off, a, um, uh, a hardening of religious beliefs in... In Europe and the continent and people are no longer willing to give him alliances and uh, to give him marriages that will form alliances so I think he's uh, he's going to start collecting money for mercenaries if necessary because I think that Flansina trusts nobody at this point in time um, he oscillates between uh, a drunken belief that he controls everyone and that he has strings throughout the kingdom controlling everybody and Moments of paranoid, I don't want to say uh, reality or anything like that, but um, wakeful hungover paranoia in which he believes that there are daggers waiting for him behind every corner. And uh, so, yeah, I'm going to put together some money and prepare some mercenaries if needed. Thank you very much for joining me on this episode. Please do leave a like if you enjoyed it. Uh, I look forward to the comments on this one and the comments on Flancina in general, and I look forward to seeing you on the next one.